She's talking about me. You. What's up, everyone? This is Disney Plus Deets, where we break down everything you need to know about your favorite Disney Plus movies and series. I'm Kenneth. And I'm Marcellus. And today we're counting down the top 10 facts of the Pixar animated favorite, Coco. Here we go. Number 10. Coco is a beloved movie about tradition and family. To prepare, the filmmakers spent three years researching Mexican culture. They visited museums, markets, plazas, workshops, churches, and cemeteries all throughout Mexico. No wonder everything looks so authentic. Mm-hmm. I have to sing. I have to play. To prepare for the role of Ernesto de la Cruz, Benjamin Bratt watched movies from the golden age of Mexican cinema, including clips featuring Pedro Infante and Jorge Negrete, two film and music stars who were as beloved and admired for their singing prowess as they were for their acting. Did someone say acting and singing? Uh. Let me stop you right there. Marcellus, let me be great. I'm gonna let you stop. <laughs> hey kid, man, you were on fire tonight. <laughs> For his audition as the voice of Miguel, Anthony Gonzalez sang a 10 minute long song in acapella. 10 minutes? I know. The filmmakers didn't even know if Miguel would be singing in the movie, but they were wild by his audition and that sealed the deal. He went in there and took what was his. I want to be like Anthony Gonzalez when I grow up. Me too. Show me what you got, muchacho. As opposed to the bright decor of Dia de los Muertos, the shoe workshop was designed to feel boxed in and confined, reflecting Miguel's conflicted feelings about working in the family business. Follow your dreams, Miguel. There's Dante. I yeah. love, love, love Dante. <laughs> Such a cool dog. Dante is based on Mexican Sholo dogs. Reference as far back as 3,500 years ago, the breed was named for the Aztec god Shalot. Plus, the Aztec word for dog is Quitle. Thought to be guides into the land of the dead, the Sholo dog is said to have healing powers. <laughs> Number five. Alabrijes are Mexican folk art that have been around since the 1930s. The filmmakers were so inspired by their beautiful colors and patterns that they decided to write them into the film as magical spirit guides. It took animators six months to create the digital sculpture of Mama Imelda's jaguar, Pepita. What would your spirit guide be, Marcellus? Probably a turtle. Oh, that's nice. I would ask you why a turtle, but we don't have a lot of time for explanation. You're right. Mm-hmm. The filmmakers strapped cameras on guitars to give animators exact reference footage for how musicians' fingers moved and played each song and melody. You gotta love the detail. You really do. The Oscar-winning songwriting duo Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez wrote Coco's Academy Award-winning best song, Remember Me. Anderson Lopez wrote the lyrics while riding the subway commuting from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Do you think I could write a hit song during my commute? You should probably keep your eyes on the road. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Miguel, uh, nothing? Early on, Abuelita carried a wooden spoon tucked in her apron to reprimand anyone that got out of line. But eventually, the spoon was changed to a chancla to be authentic to Mexican culture. I ran from my grandma so many times. Did she catch you? No, I'm still running. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Look at this scene. To create the move for the land of the dead, the filmmakers digitally placed over 7 million lights. Oh, I know they had to be tired. And who held the ladder? <laughs> it's digital, kid. <laughs> now you know the deets on Coco. Take care of yourselves and the planet, and we'll see you next time. Marcellus and Ken signing off. And though we have to say goodbye, remember me. And me too. And Ken. <laughs>